everyone, it's Dylan from the Black Forest Wood Company. We're just here today to film our next YouTube video and this one is going to be another how-to. We've got a really cool table here beside me. It's our Canadian quilted maple that we've cast. Basically what I want to do, I want to show you all the different steps of sanding. So we'll start with the orbital sander. I'll explain all the different grits we go through. I'll give some tips on, you know, certain ways to hold your hand. For this piece here, we're going to be using our, our Marcus sanders. Uh, we really like these sanders in our shop here. They do have a dust collection on them as well for an option. So we've got like these little vacuum kits and you can just basically hook a hose up to this and it eliminates all the dust while you're sanding. Uh, all of them are being used right now. So I got a dust mask, we'll make a little dust today. That's no big deal. And then the, the next most important thing is obviously the kind of abrasives you're gonna use. So. All of these techniques I'm going to explain today, they can be applied to, to any type of abrasive, but we really like these netted abrasives. Uh, again, ours are from Merca, but there's many other companies out there who make these. And you can see they're, they're see-through kind of actually. And what that does is when you're sanding, if you have the vacuum hooked up, it'll actually pull the dust right through the sandpaper. And we just find these last a lot longer. Like instead of having the sandpaper that has the grit sprayed right onto it, that seems to get knocked off pretty easily and wears out. These just last a lot longer because if they do, you know, get dull, you just blow out some of the dust and it, it like refreshes them. So we're gonna start at 120. Now we're gonna work our way all the way up to 320. That's gonna be the final grit. But the succession we're gonna follow is 120, 150, 180, uh, 220 and then 320. So by following that whole uh, procedure, it's going to give you the smoothest possible finish. If you were to, if you were to let's say start on 180 and then only go up to 320, you would have a really hard time getting those sanding scratches out from the lower grits. And same thing, let's say if you started at 120 but you skipped 150 and went straight to 180, well then it's going to take a long time to get the 120 scratches out using 180. So you don't want to skip any grits. You want to make sure you follow that whole system. And doing that is going to allow you to get a really nice, even, smooth finish. And the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the whole perimeter, not the flat spot, just this angled part. And I'm going to go around the whole perimeter and remove those scratches from the belt sander. One more tip when you're kind of on these on these lower grits especially, some of the, the marks from your belt sander, whatever kind of sander you use, may seem like they're really hard to get out. And your natural tendency is gonna be to, to tilt the sander on an angle to try and make it sand more in that spot. Now, that'll probably work. It'll probably get rid of your scratch, but it's also gonna do something that you don't necessarily want. And what that is, is by by moving your sander from the flat surface to an angled surface like that, what you'll do is you'll actually sand a dip. So no matter no matter how tempting it can be and no matter how bad you want to just get rid of those scratches, it's way better to just leave this sander completely flat, take the extra time to do the work because then you know that your finished surface isn't going to have bumps and divots in it. Now we're at the point where you know we've got our our one surface cleaned up and what we need to do now is we still want to sand this surface, and we want to sand this surface, but we don't want to round over this transition. We want people to still be able to kind of be able to either visually see it or even follow it whenever they touch it. So kind of similar technique to when we did this edge. All you need to do, when I, when I approach this line here, I'm kind of tracing it right now with my finger. When I approach it when I'm on this face, what I don't want to do is tilt the sander any way like that. So you basically, you wouldn't want to expose more than half of this side of the sander to the other surface because then it's going to want to round over. And same thing applies when I'm up here. When I'm sanding this top surface, it's really, really critical that the sander stays flat on this surface because if I don't, you're going you're gonna to tilt it over and you're going to lose that nice definition. So now we need to worry about sanding our edges. So this was, it was cut by our CNC machine. So on here right now, there's there's marks from our router that we used to flush trim it, and then there's also marks from the router that was on the CNC. And anything that you see here right now is gonna be way more obvious once it's finally finished. Now with this piece, normally on a, on a table this size, 
you know, you've got about a three inch or a two inch edge to sand. So it's, it's really easy to keep your sander flat. On here, we've only got about three quarters of an inch. So it's really, really crucial that, again, my sander is staying flat and it's a curved surface too. So it's a little more challenging, but the best way that I've found to, to keep your sander flat, you keep steady, consistent pressure into the piece of wood. So the lighter you go with the pressure on your hand, pushing, pushing like this into the wood, the easier it's gonna be for the sander to wanna move. Whereas the more pressure you have, now you don't want to have you know, so much pressure that you're, make, you're denting the pad on the sander, uh, but the more pressure you have, the flatter it's going to stay. You can see if I wipe that dust off, there's no more of those router marks that were on there before, and we've got a nice, smooth, and consistent surface. What are we getting ready to do here, Joe? We're going to be putting some fills in this table. Yeah. Uh, there's some holes at the top here, and we just want to make it all smooth and nice for the customer. Yeah, we're, like right now, if you come check these out, we, from our main floor, there's like all, not a lot, but there's a few just little voids, things like that. And some cracks that uh, also didn't get filled quite all the way. Yeah, so, we just want to make sure it's perfect, you know, we're kind of perfectionists. So any anything like this, we're gonna find it. Let's show what we're using. This is what we're gonna do. Bottles are sticky. Yeah, the bottles are really sticky. Uh, but this is not like the usual uh, resin that we use. This is a really quick setting, five minute thing, and it's just for little touch-ups like this. And it this stuff actually smells really, really bad too. So probably wear a mask while you're working with this, uh, gloves as well too, but we're just, uh, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we're going to go around, it's going to hit all the holes, and then we'll move back on to sand in the top. This crack is what we want to be filling here because it's not natural, and it's, uh, it's just a little bit skinny right now, so I'm going to try and open it up a little bit with my knife here, just so that we can fit a little bit more epoxy in there to fill the whole thing. So we want to be making sure that we're filling it all the way. Because if we don't, then it doesn't come flat on the top and then it doesn't look great. We want it to look great because we're great people. So what we're doing here is uh, we're getting the air hose here and we're just going to spray out all the holes just to make sure that we didn't miss anything because uh, sawdust can build up in between uh, any of the crevices and then it's really easy to miss that and we don't want to miss that because we want to get it all filled up. So yesterday we, uh, we sanded up the bottom and we tried to make that look all nice. Uh, today we filled in the top, uh, like all the holes that, uh, that hadn't been filled from our initial pour and now we're about to sand those down. So we just brought the table up. We're about to apply some uh, wood wax finish, extra thin. Extra thin. Um, <laughs> make sure it's the extra thin. Yeah. Because when we apply this, we use this as our first coat because it actually sinks deeper into the wood because it's a thinner product than yeah. the polish. Yeah, it looks like, show them, how, show them how thin it is. So it's like, it's really liquidy. Yeah. It's almost, almost the consistency of water, a little bit thicker. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'll penetrate more into the wood than uh, the polish does. So we use this as our first coat just to, really get it in there. Yeah, and then we'll do like, after we do this first coat of this, then it's the two coats of Pollux and a coat of liquid wax cleaner. The, the Pollux is basically a thicker version of this, and then the liquid wax cleaner is just the waxes from the Pollux. So the liquid wax cleaner is what's gonna make it really shiny in the end. One advantage here with what we're doing right now, and instead of just applying this by hand, we're actually using a mechanical buffer because the pad that we have on there is actually going to help to generate some friction. So it will heat up the oil and also help drive it deeper into those pores of the wood. What you just saw Josiah do there is just he lifts it up before he goes over it with the buffer because if you don't, you just get completely sprayed with the oil. I think we all kind of have clothes that have like a band of, oh, oh, of yeah. oily <laughs> stains just like across our waist. So we're just trying to keep clean. We, all right, so we already did one coat of Pollux on the bottom here. So it's looking pretty nice and uh, we're about to apply a second coat right now. So this time uh, we're actually going to be applying it 
a little bit differently. Uh, so instead of pouring it down and then hitting it with the buffer immediately, I'm just gonna rub it in with a scotch brite at first, uh, just so that it doesn't come over the edge and drip because it, the table actually has a taper to it. So if we put oil on it, it would just roll off the sides and create like a, a bad edge. Now I'm gonna take a rag and I'm just gonna wipe it around the edges just so I can make sure that if any of the uh, product came off the surface and did drip around to the side, we can just clean that up so it doesn't leave any streaks along the side and it leaves a really nice clean surface. Now we've cleaned up the edges on the table and we're just gonna go back to the top. We're gonna flip our pad over from this side, get a clean side on it. And then uh, we're just gonna buff off any little extra bits of residue that we have. We've got the, the second coat of Pollux now on the bottom of this. Uh, we got one coat of the, the wood wax extra thin. Nice. <laughs> we got one coat of the extra thin on the on the top side, and that's where we're gonna end the video here. So we have a few more steps to go still. Yeah, and the next steps will be, we're gonna be putting one more coat of Pollux on the bottom, so they'll have three in total. Yeah. And we're gonna flip it back over once that's all dried up, and we're gonna do two coats of Pollux on the top, and then one coat of... Uh... That liquid wax cleaner. Yeah, right? that's, that's yeah, the that's one. The that's the stuff. One. That's liquid the stuff. Cleaner. Liquid wax cleaner. Um, but then once, once we've got that done, the table's finished. So if you guys wanna see the finished product of this table, you're gonna have to head over to our Instagram, because that's where we're gonna post all the finished shots. But that's it for this video. Uh, we'll see you guys next Friday. Hope you enjoyed it. Woo! We're talking about donuts. Yeah. Wanna buy my donut? Yes. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs>